All right, let's start by looking at the widget class. Okay, so our widget here is just a, a simple POJO, and it contains two um, data items. For each widget, we're going to store an ID as well as a name. And we're going to generate these names using this static um, integer ID generator. So every time we create a new one in the constructor, we're going to go ahead and generate a new integer ID for that. And then the rest of the code here um, consists of both setters and getters. Okay, so we can set and get the ID and the name. And then we've written a few helper methods to generate different representations. So if we call to JSON, it'll generate a representation of this widget object in um, JSON format. And if we call to string, we get a really simple um, string format. And then we also have a um, to H HTML, which will generate HTML in HTML representation. So that's pretty much it for our POJO. And now let's look at the web services the web service application class. So as I mentioned before, it extends the application class, which is defined in the um, org.restlet package. And then we have a main program here that is going to instantiate the HTTP server component that I mentioned to you. So when we run this application, the very first thing it does creates this component, adds um, a protocol, HTTP protocol to it um, and binds to port 8100 and then it um, creates an instance of the web server application so it creates an application object and then finally um, it's going to start this component. So if we look at the constructor for web service application, it's just creating a new empty hash table. And this is what we're going to use to store um, the widget objects that get created. And then there's this method called create root that returns a restlet. And the restlet framework calls this to basically give us an opportunity to create the routing. So in other words, um, based on which HTTP method is associated with an HTTP request as well as the URL that the request was submitted at, we need to specify which resource class is going to implement it. So we've already talked about these in the previous video. There's the URI pattern which consists of just slash widgets. Those are going to get mapped to widgets resource and then there's a second URI pattern, widgets slash um, ID, which is going to get mapped to the widget resource class. Okay, And then we create a default home page on our web server um, with this method here. This is basically what's going to uh, appear when people just type in the host name colon port 8100 slash so without any any URI just the root level this is the default page that you get back and then we've added a few helper functions and these help the um, resource uh, classes get at the widget repository that the application object is storing so we can get a single widget reference if we give the ID we can save a widget delete a widget or get a collection of all of our widgets. Now let's look at the widgets resource class. And remember this is the resource class that's going to handle all of the requests coming in at slash widgets. So the first thing we do in the class constructor is we have to go off and see uh, we have to go off and fetch the collection of widgets that are currently stored by the server. And so we get our reference to our application object and we call that helper method. And then the last thing we do in the constructor is we specify what types of representations 
that we can uh, respond to. And in this case, we're going to generate both HTML as well as JSON, as we mentioned earlier. Okay. Then for each of the methods that I'm going to implement at this for this particular URI pattern, I need to basically enable the method. So I call these these different functions. So allow post um, returning true, overriding that, and returning true is going to let me um, do post methods and the set readable um, override here, returning true, is going to let me implement the HTTP get method. And the method called represent is in fact the method that gets called when an HTTP get um, is sent to the server. And so if we don't have any widgets stored, we're going to return some type of error message. But in the normal case, we're going to look at the variant type and then generate the appropriate representation. So here, if they're asking for JSON, I go ahead and I generate a JSON representation of my collection of widgets and return that. And in the else branch, I'm going to just handle the HTML case. So if I end up here, I'm going to generate the HTML. So that's pretty much it. That's how I handle um, the get method. And if somebody calls post, um, what that means is they're trying to create a new widget on the server. So if that happens, we're going to expect the body of the post request to have the um, www form encoded um, format here. And basically, it's going to have our name. So we're going to create a new widget. We're going to process, uh, get a form entity. Um, and these are classes the framework provides us. And then we're going to create a widget instance. We're going to set the name on that uh, widget. And then finally, we're going to tell our app object to save it, and we're going to set the status to OK. And then here, we're just going to generate an HTML representation of that by default. In theory, we should probably be looking at the accept header here and, and trying to um, match what they're asking. And then finally, if, um, if, it was, uh, if the form wasn't processable, we would return a bad request error here. Okay. And the rest of this is just some air handling um, that we're going to simply ignore and assume works for now. So that's the widgets resource class. Now let's look at the widget resource class, and this is widget singular. And so this is the class that's going to um, handle all the requests that come in with slash widgets slash ID. So the constructor looks very similar to the constructor that we just looked at for widgets resource. The only thing is here we actually get an ID on the URI that we're going to uh, pull off and um, use to retrieve the specific widget that we're looking at. Um, so we call the get widget method on the application object using that widget ID. And then we go ahead and add the two variant types as we did before. So here at this level we're going to support HTTP put delete, and uh, get. And so get will send uh, return to us the representation of a single widget. So the previous resource class returned a collection. Here we're just generating a representation of a single widget. And put is going to be used to update an existing widget. So once again, we're going to pull the form apart that came up with the put command and pull the attributes out of there and set them on our widget and save it. And then the remove representation um, actually goes and deletes our reference to the widget with the given ID. And the rest of this again is just air handling stuff that we're going to ignore for now. So that's pretty much the widget resource class.